who is making sure that if somebody shows up, pick a random name, and says they're a citizen, who is checking that they are a citizen? Of course, nobody's checking that they're a citizen. So you have an entire opportunity here for, for cheating, and that's why this bill has to pass. You have to ask yourself, why did all but three Democrats vote against a provision yesterday that you have to prove that you're a citizen before you vote? I mean, isn't that a bizarre vote to take? But that is sadly where the Democrat Party is right now. They can't wait a few years until some of these new immigrants become citizens or until they have children they become citizens the democrat party is so radical right now that they want these people voting immediately and if they don't want them to vote fine just have them show their citizens what's the evidence that it's happening where where have you seen that well, i haven't seen it but we know it's happening right i haven't seen it but we know it's happening right that's republican congressman Glenn Grothman of Wisconsin admitting he has no evidence of his voter fraud claims after suggesting voting by undocumented immigrants will influence the outcome of federal elections. Joe, this is something we've heard right from the top from Donald Trump all the way down through the party that preparing themselves for some kind of a protest if Donald Trump loses this election because it will be that undocumented immigrants voted for Kamala Harris. Again, no evidence of it at all. Uh, and they are now willing to shut down the government. Most Senate Republicans, I think, believe this is crazy, uh, but willing to shut down the government uh, to say that something that's illegal is illegal. Uh, it, 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 just makes, it just makes absolutely no sense. And Elise Jordan, I've got to say, on top of that, uh, throwing in the replacement theory that, oh, these illegal immigrants are being brought into America uh, because they they want to get them to vote and replace us, basically, is, is, again, the overall argument. And they are, and by the way, they're split in their own party over this, too. They are willing, or Donald Trump is trying to push them to shut down the government to say in a bill that something that illegal is still illegal. Again, it's just they're, they are, they are looking for a fight. They're looking for an excuse to shut down the government when actually people that understand in the Republican Party what's best for them knows that Donald Trump is once again leading them down a dangerous electoral path. Donald Trump doesn't actually care about the functioning of the American government and that American citizens have a, have government institutions that are funded and able to respond to their needs. He cares about scoring political points right now. And you look at what happened with the border bill and there was a chance for there to be bipartisan agreement to do something about the crisis at the border. But no, Donald Trump torpedoes it. He's not interested in policy and doing anything that actually helps the American people. He only is out for himself and his narrow electoral interests, which is why we're also seeing the increased fear mongering, uh, him using words like infested and dehumanizing immigrants and migrants. Uh, you know, we're hearing that because he's at a moment of desperation. It reminds me of 2018 when he was ranting about the caravans of migrants coming over the border. And that was an election where he was nervous and he didn't fare as well. And I think this is just repeating again. Let's bring into the conversation congressional investigations reporter for The Washington Post, Jackie Alamany. Jackie, it's great to see you. So what is the state of play here, the, the sort of this bind that Speaker Johnson finds himself in needing Democratic votes to get through the continuing resolution to keep the government open, set to close on October the 1st? But Hakeem Jeffries, the Democratic leader, saying the SAVE Act is an absolute non-starter. He believes it's voter suppression, that there are already laws on the books that say if you're here illegally, you cannot vote in an American election. What does the speaker do with all this? That is, is really the question going into next week when government funding is going to expire on September 30th with a government shutdown on October 1st. But look, this six-month extension that, that Speaker Johnson had his, his majority really forced his majority to vote on this week, despite knowing that it was most likely going to fail. It was a six-month extension of current federal spending levels in addition to the SAVE Act. 
he, he wanted it to fail so he can now go and have additional leverage, pivot to the Senate and be able to say to his party, OK, now we're going to, to start negotiations with Senate Democrats, a, a Senate uh, Democratic led majority in order to try to avoid a shutdown, which both Republicans and Democrats have said is politically unpalatable. Um, but look, as, as you just noted, the SAVE Act is, is not going to get done. The White House has said it, they're going to veto it. It's not going to get done through a Senate. And actually, just to fact check Glenn Grothman there, there were actually a number of Democrats who initially voted in favor of this bill when it got through the House uh, over the summer. So th there isn't a sort of unanimity over um, Democratic feelings ab about this, but there is an acknowledgement that it's not ultimately going to pass. But whether um, the, all of these sort of ideological factions are going to be able to come together and ultimately agree on, on the current spending levels and whether or not they want to extend that for three months or six months and whether that should be a, a clean bill or not is really a, a, a TBD question um, that's going to need to be answered this week. So, Jackie, it seems like no one on Capitol Hill actually wants a shutdown. I believe Mitch McConnell's words were it would be beyond stupid to do so uh, so close to an election in particular. And he noted correctly, Republicans would get the blame. One person who might, though, is Donald Trump. He keeps posting on Truth Social saying, hey, if you don't get my voting rights uh, legislation out there, the voter ID, citizens' rights thing, which is all nonsense, um, you know, you should shut it down. We know he met with Speaker Johnson last night in Washington. We heard, we learned anything about what they spoke about and what's the fear among Republicans that Trump is going to take them over a shutdown cliff? We don't have a readout of that conversation just yet, but we know that Speaker Johnson has been in close touch with Trump throughout these last few weeks as Trump has been consistently calling for a government shutdown calls that, that really started at the end of August over the SAVE Act. Uh, there is a sort of a, a quiet private feeling that Trump is really trying to utilize the situation that Congress finds itself in in order to elevate and, and escalate uh, attention around these anti immigrant policies that he's really pushing from Spring Springfield, Ohio, to, to demonizing uh, Haitian migrants, to uh, passing the, the SAVE Act in um, in Congress. And, you know, when I was doing some reporting on preparations that uh, House Democrats are making ahead of January 6th, this was something that they uh, they all pointed to as, as sort of a, a galvanizing call that Trump was making to try to, as Elise noted, set up um, some sort of... Uh, you know, um, uh, 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 problem for uh, Democrats that once an election, the election does ultimately happen, there there's a scapegoat here that that Trump can ultimately point to um, again these these. Uh, these unsupported claims that there are illegal immigrants who are voting in mass in elections, which there's no evidence to support whatsoever. None, but. This is a good congressman said, you know what's happening. It must be happening. Uh, so, Jackie, um, I, I'm, I'm curious about uh, Speaker Johnson. He has sort of survived against all odds uh, much longer than people thought he was going to survive. I'm wondering, does this present a real challenge to his long term viability as Republican speaker? Yeah, Joe, this is the exact scenario that actually Kevin McCarthy found himself in when he when he ultimately lost the speakership, when he was trying to control his very narrow majority to get behind um, continuing the the same spending um, of federal funds that that the government is now seeing. Um, but I think the difference between Johnson and McCarthy that has gotten Johnson so far uh, at, at this point, at least, is that is that Johnson is less preoccupied with holding on to power. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, despite some of the, the performative actions and um, some of his his rhetoric, he is really focused on on trying to ultimately fund the government and get things through. He's a little bit more of a realist when it comes to what is is politically palatable, and he has maintained some decent relationships with players in these ideological factions. That being said, uh, I think that Johnson is potentially setting himself up for some mutiny uh, post-election in the case that Republicans do lose their majority. I think that he could see some serious challenges from people uh, like Jim Jordan, people who are going to be trying to push him out, vying for um, minority leader. Uh, but but that there's so much to come before that. And I, th I think for now, um, if there is anyone who has 
been able to somehow navigate uh, this this narrow majority and that these brittle factions. It has been Mike Johnson, surprisingly. And the clock is ticking to that October 1st shutdown deadline. The Washington Post, Jackie Alamany. Jackie, thanks so much. Come